Welcome to Motorland, a podcast driven by AAA about the road of life and the wheels that set our journeys in motion. I'm Jared Deanda, voice of motorsports and auto events all around the world, and your wheel man here in Motorland. And I'm Michelle Donati from AAA, happy to be along for the ride. Today's guest is Jay Ward. I'm super excited. Love Jay. He's a personal friend of mine. He's a creative director of franchise at Pixar Animation Studios. Yeah, that's right. And most importantly, he is the keeper of the Cars franchise. My kids love the Cars movies. And I will say we have multiple Lightning McQueen cars around my house. Well, today we'll learn about Jay's story from starting car shows to literally running the biggest car show of all. And we're going to learn a little about where the Cars franchise is heading next. Are you ready? I am speed. Well, then buckle up. Let's ride. Jay Ward, welcome to Motorland. So excited to have this conversation. Everybody get to know you a little bit more, man. Oh, thank you very much. I'm excited to be here. I've had the joy of going through those studios and so much inspiration around Pixar Studio from Brooklyn building to Steve Jobs building and all that. Yeah. So tell us about this journey that led you into your role for cars. And were you into cars growing up? At what point kind of did you get that impression that cars are going to play a role in your life? I think cars were always there for me, like from a very, very young age. So my, my dad and mother divorced when I was little and Kansas City, Missouri is my hometown. My dad stayed in KC. We moved to California with my mom because she did not want to be a single woman shoveling snow. Don't blame her. I would go back and visit. My dad had some amazing cars when I was a kid, but I didn't grow up with him. But I really did idolize him. But I got my nerdy car knowledge because the Modesto B on Sundays, I'd flip to the classic car section and I would just go down every classic car and circle it. Then I had a book called the Tad Burness Car Spotter's Guide. And I'd look up every single car and go, ooh, 58 Chrysler. Ooh, that's kind of a 300. And I'd circle it. <laughs> exactly. And that's how I learned about cars. And I got this weird uh, knowledge from that. And I remember I had, I wrote a letter to General Motors and said, I want to be a car designer in the like eighties. And they sent back the, this like super janky brochure, these guys with mustaches drawing cars. And I'm going, <laughs> I don't know, maybe I don't want to be a car designer. I, I don't think I've ever shared with you. I grew up wanting to be an animator. What happened? <laughs> you smelt too much burnt tire rubber and look what happened to you. Yeah. Um, when I was in high school, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I was a, an okay artist. I wasn't a great artist, but I loved art. So I had all those little elements, but I didn't know how to apply it. So I joined the Navy reserves. And so I got the GI bill money, you know, served the country for a little bit during desert storm. Yeah. And then had enough money to go to CCAC, California college of arts and crafts in Oakland. My roommate in art school was a sculptor named Jerome ramped. Super cool guy, older than me. He's like a big brother and I never had a big brother. So we really bonded. Yeah. He left school before me. And then he ended up at Pixar on a bug's life. And he said, Hey, I'm working at this place now called Pixar. And so I was, a, at this point, I had leveled up to being a manager at the Harley Davidson dealership, right? Like I could have made it my career. And I said, Jerome, I don't care what opens up. Just keep your ear out for me. So they hired me as a PA on Monsters, Inc. In the, at the very end of 1998. So you have this opportunity. You walk in early at Pixar. When did you literally and figuratively get handed the keys for cars and creating that universe. Um, What happened was as Monsters Inc. was wrapping up, um, John Lasseter was starting on cars and I was a hot rod person. I started a car show called Bulletproof in the Bay Area, which was a low buck hot rod show that I started before I even worked at Pixar. And so I kind of got to become what I call a car sultan for the art department. Whoa. Yeah. That's a huge responsibility because if it wasn't authentic, people would have, eh. Yeah. So, so thank you. You're authentic as they come, man. You know, that memory of the Tad Burness book, I'd go, well, actually, that's the wrong lug pattern. Or, <laughs> you know, that car's cool, but instead, you should be looking at this car instead. This car was way cooler. And they go, really? You've played such an instrumental role of, of the car's world and the car's universe. So how did you go about creating that universe. Yeah. We wanted to make a believable world. And so it was a combination of in-house designs like Buzz and Woody, right? Those are our own designs. They feel like a real toy from that era, but they're a hundred percent ours. But then when you watch, like there was licensed products in Toy Story 2, like Mr. Potato Head, we didn't own. So for cars, it was the same thing. We had this mix. Um, Sheriff is a, is a 49 Merc and Fillmore is a 60 VW bus. So we had to go to those manufacturers and get permission. Yeah. But they don't know what they're giving you permission for, right? I mean, that, that's that's storytelling. That's that's a beautiful marriage of cars. It's a weird trust thing, right? And I remember um, Porsche. Actually, Porsche is one of the first companies to sign on with us. And I thought they would be the hardest. And we set them down at Pixar and showed them Sally. And they said, well, why, why are you making a female car? Our buyers are like 85% male. And I said, well, 
it sounds like the area you need to grow in is female buyers. And they're like, oh. <laughs> and I remember going to Detroit with our like art boards and going to Ford and GM and saying, we want to put your cars in our movie. And GM saying, okay, you can use our car in the movie, but just don't have it fall in love with a Ford car. That's crazy. I mean, you were made for this role, Jay. So, so speaking of characters, I'll name a character and you tell me how they came to be. Okay. Sarge. That was really one where we just, the more we read about how significant the Jeep was, how it literally was the vehicle of World War II. It was the one that the American soldiers, you know, the famous cartoon where the guy has to like put the Jeep out of its misery with his gun and he's like crying. Yeah. That's how important that car was. And so we wanted it to be featured in some way. Yeah. Fillmore. You know, the, the movie Cars is about characters that happen to be vehicles, not vehicles that are characters, right? So we wanted the World War II uptight guy next to the hippie. And the bus, the VW bus symbolized so much of the 60s and the change in this country. So we're like, we got to put the bus with the crazy painting next door to the World War II Jeep. Ramon. Yeah. We wanted LA car culture represented and the low rider. He was originally going to be a 61 Impala, but we realized 59 really <laughs> is, is over the top. Teardrop taillights, the lay down fins are like, okay, we got to go 59. And of course, Lightning McQueen is, is the major star. He's kind of the the feature vehicle, but how did he, how did Lightning McQueen come to be? Yeah. I mean, the, the, the impetus of the story, just the 10,000 foot view is life is about the journey, not the destination. So for McQueen, he was a race car and his job was, I just want to get across the finish line. I just want to win the race. And he was missing so much of life. He had no friends, right? So for McQueen's design, the beautiful thing was you know, we looked at NASCAR and NASCAR in the 2000s, they were doing these very jelly bean shapes. Blobbish. Let's call it blobbish. A little blobbish. Not pretty. But we didn't have to follow those rules, right? We made McQueen, the King, and Chick Hicks, the three cars that you need to pay attention to, all very unique eras and shapes and colors. You never lose track of them ever, right? McQueen, bright red, kind of modern, kind of classic. Chick Hicks, this 80s lime green choppy shape with too many decals on it. The King, yeah, this blue... Superbird with the crazy tall wing. Yeah. And you you can't miss those cars. <laughs> that visual language is important to us. Somebody that you could also outline is Mater. How did Mater come to be? Um, when you think about McQueen and what he needs in his life, right? He, he needs to find love, which is Sally. He needs to find a father figure, which is Doc. And he needs to find a best friend. And in his best friend, you want the opposite because there's the, the best movies are opposites as friends. And you think about a guy who has no ego, no pretense, not in a hurry. And his primary job is to help others. He drives around with a hook. <laughs> so it's, it's perfect, right? This is a crazy thing. Jerome, I told you about Jerome Ramf, my roommate in art school. His older brother was Joe Ramf. And Joe is a Disney story legend. And uh, he, he went on that research trip when they were in Galena, Kansas and saw that tow truck sitting next to that gas station and just said, that's, you know, this is the guy to be paired with McQueen right here, this truck. That's crazy. And because some people would think the kind of opposite where Larry, the cable guy, and you work around the voice. And what you're touching on is something unique. I think about Pixar. There's a lot of studios, animation studios that will hire the actor and then they'll make the character look like that person. And the story will be that person's story. And that's fine. We do the opposite. I mean, did you have that like aha moment? You're like, oh my gosh, I'm exactly where I need to be. Yeah. I feel like I'm super blessed to get to do what I'm doing. And I realize it's, I couldn't tell you how many people told me my kid watches that movie like three times a day, every day. And I'm like, what? It's so repeatable, so watchable. And I went to the Peterson Automotive Museum to do a talk about cars. And this dude comes up to me like seriously with tears in his eyes. And he goes, I have a Hudson Hornet. He goes, and my grandkids, they never wanted to talk to me, never wanted to hang out with me. They're at my house every weekend asking, hey, grandpa, can we go out in the Hudson? And he said, that movie meant so much to them that we connect on something we never connected on before. I was like, whoa, this movie actually impacted other people's lives too. Whoa. You know, going down Route 66, I took my family on an Airstream trip during the pandemic. And I said, you know what? We're going to hit every town that inspired the movie Cars. This movie actually helped these little businesses on Route 66 stay alive in some cases. And so I think it made it even more meaningful. Yeah. The places that people forget, but just need to pay a respect. I think I know exactly where it's based on and I have an idea, but I want to know if I'm correct. Is Radiator Springs based on a real place? You watch that movie and you're like, that is the Southwest. There is no doubt this is somewhere between Arizona and New Mexico. I just know. Maybe a little bit of Utah. You can go up to Utah and see some of those rock formations that look like hood ornaments or 
car fenders and you're like, okay, there's some Bryce Canyon there. <laughs> it's not one place, but I think that's what makes it great is that all these people, all these kids are like, I'm going to go visit Radiator Springs and they get in their car with their parents and they drive to these towns and they find elements of it everywhere. So it's not just one place, which which I think adds to the story and the, and the folklore of it all. Yeah. What's next in the Cars universe? What is up? What we have coming for the first time ever is a new series coming to Disney Plus called Cars on the Road. And this is Mater McQueen hitting the road on a long distance road trip for Mater's sister's wedding. It's nine episodes and about 60 minutes of new content. So I spent the last two years off and on kind of helping the team on that and working on that project. We just wrapped it and they're funny and they're fun. You'll see the old Raider Springs gang back, meet lots of new characters, but it's just, it's just fun. It's like what you love about cars. And why wasn't I called to be a voice of one of the characters, (laughs) J-Rod, in this episode? Oh, you know what? You already have a carified name. So you are definitely in the queue. (laughs) Oh, I forgot to mention Cars on the Road. It comes out September 8th. So September 8th, Disney Plus will be, which is Disney Plus Day this year, will be Cars on the Road. And then we'll work on J-Rod. We need to carify your last name. J-Rod, well, last name's D-Enda, so J-Rod capital A. Okay, okay, well, we'll work on it. Yeah, thank you so much, J-Ward. I really appreciate your time. And I could sit here and talk with you for hours. And, you know, we, we only have so much time. But again, Jay, thank you so much, man. No, it's my pleasure. Jared, it's fascinating how much Cars has had an impact, not on just movies, not on just the roads, but really our culture as a whole. Yeah, I mean, just the scenery, the backdrops, and how much authenticity goes into the Cars franchise is really incredible. It's time to ask you, are you a Cars super fan? We want to see your stuff, whether it's collections, fan art, memorabilia, show it, tag us on Instagram using hashtag Motorland Podcast. And of course, don't forget to follow us at Motorland Podcast to keep connected to the show and keep the conversation going. Michelle, as always, thank you so much for riding along. Happy to be riding shotgun. Hello, LA, hello, take me anywhere. Motorland is executive produced by AAA Mountain West Group in cooperation with Sound That Brands. Hello, Take Me Anywhere is written by Justin Sullivan, performed by Night Shop, by arrangement with Terror Bird Media. Reproduction or distribution without prior consent of AAA Incorporated and AAA Mountain West Group is prohibited. The AAA logo is a trademark of AAA Incorporated. The Motorland Podcast logo is a trademark of AAA Northern California, Nevada, and Utah. Thank you for listening. If you like it here in Motorland, please give us a rating and review, and of course, share it with all of your friends. It's kind of like sending postcards that say, wish you were here. I'm Jared DeAnda. May the road rise to meet you and the wind be at your back. We'll see you again in Mo.